Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about improving tab and subform loading speed. Now I'd like to start off this video by showing you a comment from the last video I did on creating tabs and adding form controls to those tabs. And this comment comes from Stephen Perry, where he says, Thanks, Steve. Always enjoy your videos. Thank you very much, Mr. Perry. The tab control is a very useful feature. However, one of the things I like to do with mine is to use late binding to speed up form loading. Most of the time, tab pages will be used to hold subforms, which all need to load data. When your main form loads, this can cause a major delay, especially if your data is remotely being accessed over network shares or SQL servers. I use the on change event like you showed, however I check to see if the subform's source object is not yet set, and then bind to the subform source. This way it doesn't load data until the user actually clicks on the tab to view. There is no reason to spend time loading data onto tabs if the user never clicks there to view them. Keep up the great videos. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Stephen. I really, really appreciate the kind words about these videos. Uh, I'm so grateful to all of you who have told me that these videos have helped you out so much. Uh, it's really the main reason I do them. I just want to help explain some of these more complex uh, scenarios to you. and. I, you know, I just remember how difficult it was finding good material and building an access that I really felt uh, that this was something that needed to be done. So I really appreciate those those kind words that, that Stephen has given and all of you have sent me uh, for, for doing these videos. So let's talk a little bit about what Stephen's saying here. There is a, uh, a problem that can occur with access where when your main form here, and I've just got a, a mocked up um, form here where I've got three separate tabs. And you'll see that each one of these tabs has uh, a subform underneath it. So what happens is that when this main form loads up, all of these subforms must also go out and grab their data because everything loads up all at once. When you open up one of these forms, all of these subforms also go out and retrieve their data. So what you have to do is you kind of want to meter this a little bit because let's say that the user comes and uh, opens up form one. Well, okay, now all of these queries go out and retrieve their data and your main form that's loading up takes a very long time to go out and grab all of that data, right? Because it's getting so many of these things. But the user may not even ever click on customer orders or inventory to reorder. What if all they ever come and see is the active orders? You just wasted their time. You, you caused the form to have undue delay in loading up the data and then the user never actually even sees all that data that you loaded. So the best way to handle this is to actually load up the data when the user clicks on the tab, right? So that when I click on active orders, go out and grab the data for that active orders subform. When I click on inventory to reorder, fill in the subform for my inventory to reorder, etc. So I'm going to show you kind of a, a nice, easy way to handle this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and select my tab orders, which is the name of my tab object. And I'm going to go to the on change event and I'm going to go ahead and go into the code builder. Now, before I begin putting anything in my uh, subroutine for the on change event, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a different private subroutine and I'm going to call it uh, load tab. OK, and I'm going to make a reference in my change event to this load tab subroutine. So we're going to do load tab. OK. So what I'm going to do in my load tab subroutine is I'm going to go ahead and build a select case statement. And the select case is going to go out and find out which one of these tabs the user has selected. So we're going to do load case, uh, select case me dot tab orders value. And again, that's going to return the page index of the page or tab that's been selected. Let me go ahead and end my select uh, my select case here, so in select. And now let's go ahead and fill in and set up our case, uh, our, our different cases. So again, I'm going to fill in 
this uh, subform and go out and query it at the time that the user clicks on this, this tab. So what I probably want to do then is I want to compare the value that's been selected to the tab that's been selected here. And then in my case, we'll cause some sort of action based upon which tab's been selected. So we're going to do uh, case is equal to zero, case is equal to one, case is equal to two. Because remember, the page index is zero based, right? So the uh, the page index for active orders is zero, page index for inventory to reorder is one, and customer orders page index is two. Now this is perfectly fine, this is perfectly acceptable if these were the only three tabs that I ever add. Okay, But what if I added another tab but I wanted to squish it in here between active orders and inventory to reorder? Right, That would change which uh, page index inventory to reorder is and page index for customer orders because now this would be two and this would be three. So we would end up returning the wrong case values for all of this code that we're about to put in, in below these. So rather than actually using the static numerical value, I'm gonna do something that we actually saw in the last video. I'm gonna do me dot tab orders and I'm gonna go into the pages collection and inside here, I'm going to reference the index of the, the actual page name. So here, under other, the active orders page name is active orders. So I'm going to copy this. And that's actually the index in the pages collection for that particular page. Now I'm just going to go out and grab the page index. So here, I'm just kind of doing a nice little trick. I'm, I'm comparing the value of what the user has selected on the tab to the page index value that would be returned for the active orders tab. And let me go ahead and do the same basic concept with these other two case statements. Let me just change the index here to the correct name. So inventory to reorder. And customer orders. All right. So that's all set up. Those are my case statements, right? And under each one of these now, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the record source for these subforms. So let me go ahead and go out and grab the record source. So active orders. And probably a good idea is let's go ahead and dim an SQL string and then fill in that SQL string with these values. So SQL equals, oops. I must not have gotten all of it. What did I miss? Did I miss some? Uh oh. There we go. Okay, got it. So there's that one. And then inventory to reorder. Let me grab that record source. Do the same thing. And then last but not least, our customer orders. And that is just a name of a query. Okay, order summary, I'll show you here, is a is an actual stored query within access, but that will still work inside of our SQL string. Okay, uh, it's perfectly fine to do that. So we'll do equals order summary. Okay, so now we've set our SQL string. Let's go ahead and now set the actual record source. Oops, let me click on active orders here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna actually set the record source equal to this SQL string. So the way we do that is we go ahead and do me. We gotta drill down through our subform objects, which uh, the subform object name is sub active orders. And I did the same thing with the inventory to reorder. So you see sub inventory to reorder. So I, I'm following this naming convention to make it easier for me as I'm coding through this. So me dot sub active orders. We're going to go to the form inside of it. And we're going to re uh, we're going to uh, set the uh, record source uh, record source. There we go. Equal to SQL. And now we're going to do the same thing for these other two. So me dot sub uh, inventory to reorder form record source oops, record 
source, there we go, equals SQL. And then last but not least, let's go to me.sub customer orders form record source equals SQL. And remember, whenever we set the record source, I don't know if you remember this, but when we do the record source and setting its value to a string, we actually need to go back and re-query that record source so that it updates. So me.sub active orders form uh, re-query. And do the same thing for these other ones. So me.sub inventory to reorder form re-query. Oops, there we go. Last but not least, me sub customer orders form requery. Okay, so we've got under each one of these cases, we are taking a look at the value that's been selected for the ta you know which tab the user selected, comparing that to the page index for each one of these different tabs to make sure that we we're looking at the correct tab. Then we're uh, filling in the SQL string with the actual query we want to run. Then we're filling in the record source with that query, and then we're requerying the subform. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And there's one last thing I wanna do, because I want to fill in for the active order, since this is going to be the default page that shows up, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have this form when it first loads up, Go ahead and go out and fill in the active orders uh, record source. So let's go ahead and go to the tab and go to format uh, event. There we go. On load, hit the ellipsis, go to the code builder. And now I'm just going to have it call that same load tab. Okay. Because again, by default, that active orders value uh, tab is going to be by default selected. So this me.tab orders value is going to go ahead and return the value for active orders. So the same code that I wrote here will work in either case, either when they're changing tabs or when the form first loads up. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that and compile it. And one last thing I'm going to go ahead and do just to kind of prove that this works, I'm going to go ahead and go into the record source and I'm going to delete everything in here. We're going to get rid of the record source. So these subforms under each one of these is not filling up with data until we want it to. Just a few more clicks here. Let's get a order summary. I think that's good. Yep, okay. So we've eliminated our record source for all of these tabs. And now the only thing that's filling in those record sources is this load tab event that gets called uh, or this load tab subroutine that gets called when the uh, change event happens on the tab form, uh, on the tab object, or when the form loads. Boy, I'm kind of stumbling over myself here. Sorry about that. Okay. Oops. Getting a little click happy here. Okay. So let's go ahead and load this form up now. And you'll see it behaves just like it normally would. If I click on a tab here, it goes out and fills in the form. And you can kind of even see a brief moment there that it's kind of going back and forth and filling it in, right? So it's setting those values for us the first time that we go through. And let me go ahead and show you. I just want to prove to you that these are not actually loading uh, until you actually tell them to. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go to the on change event. And let me go ahead and comment out this load tab and save it there so that when I change the tab that I've selected, it's not going to go in and refill anything. The only time that it's going to get called is when the active orders tab shows up uh, or, or when the main form loads up. So our active orders is loaded, but now when I click on inventory to reorder, you can see we don't have anything in those other subforms. And if I reactivate now the uh, on change event to go ahead and do that load tab, Once again, goes out and fills in our subforms for us. So these tabs are not filling in data until we actually click on them. Okay, and you can do this for any one of your tabs. You don't have to necessarily, uh, you know, restrict it to just subforms. Maybe you've got regular form controls that you don't really want to load up the data until uh, until you select on the tab. You can use the same code uh, that I've got here. You just instead of doing the requery and all that good stuff. 
uh, whoops, let me go to the right section here so I can show you. So you would still go to this load tab uh, subroutine, but just add some new case statements, right? And put in, you know, that you're going to fill in your text boxes with whatever data that needs to be loaded up into them. Okay, so there you go. That's how you can kind of speed up your forms when they first load and really kind of eliminate some of the data from loading up into those subforms until you really need them to show up for your user. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to drop me a comment below uh, and I would be happy to answer anything I possibly can. And as always, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe.